Hi everyone, my name is Eliana. And I'm Sharina, and we're student consultants for the Improvement for Equity by Design team at the High Tech High GSE. We've had the pleasure of teaching educators and students about empathy work over the last few years, and we're excited to walk you through some of the things that we've learned during that time. If you haven't already, be sure to watch the Empathy in Design video, which explains how using empathy work in the improvement process allows us to understand another person's experience. We'll walk you through five norms for conducting an empathy interview, which places active listening at the center of your experience. Our first norm is to start with a question that creates comfort. The purpose of starting an interview this way is to set up a safe place for your interviewee to share and create a sense of trust between you and your interviewee. A good opening question will be one that starts the conversation about your topic on a light, positive note. It shouldn't be hard to answer or intrusive. This is your chance to show your interviewee that you really are interested in hearing about their experience. Ask your interviewee something open-ended about themselves, where they'll have a chance to reflect on something positive. It's especially important to focus on this norm if there's a power dynamic that could impact your interviewee's comfort level and responses. For instance, if you're an adult interviewing a student, consider how you can create a space where the student feels comfortable to share their experience. For example, if I were interviewing a student about product-based learning, I could start with something like, tell me about one of your best memories during a high-tech high project. Beyond the phrasing of your question, your body language will also help create comfort for your interviewee and show them that they have your full attention. Pay attention to the space around you, the way you sit, and any other factors that may be important to how you are inhabiting the space. This next norm is a hard one, and it's one we're still practicing too. Seek to understand, not to confirm. Make sure you're asking questions to understand the interviewee's experience, and not just asking questions just to get a certain answer. How might this come up? Say you are interviewing a teacher and assume that the teacher doesn't want to or isn't trying to incorporate student voice into project design because they are operating from a place of fear or lack of skills. If you haven't taken the time to evaluate your assumptions, you may ask something like, what questions or worries do you have about making mistakes? This question reaffirms our assumption about where the teacher is coming from, when the goal of empathy interviews is to understand another's experiences and perspective. Instead, we can reframe the question to be, what do teachers wish students could know about their role? This allows the teacher to openly share insights without assuming anything about where they are coming from. It's helpful to ask questions that elicit stories and feelings. Open-ended questions will allow your interviewee opportunities to tell stories or share about something that they feel strongly about. For example, do you feel supported in incorporating student voice in the classroom is a yes or no question that doesn't provide your interviewee with a space to explain their experience. An alternative question that elicits stories and feelings is tell me about a time when you felt supported in incorporating student voice in the classroom. The next norm is to ask once clearly. Be okay with silence. We know it can be awkward, but there is no need to ask twice or rephrase the question unless your interviewee asks for that clarification. Along with asking questions that elicit stories and feelings, it's important to be okay with going off track with your list of questions. The track is what your interviewee wants to talk about. There will be plenty of opportunities to ask follow-up questions like, tell me more and what was that like for you? That will uncover some insight that may help with their empathy interview goal. A tip that's really helpful for practicing this norm is keeping in mind what it's like to talk with a friend. You're deep in the conversation, truly listening, and not sticking to any sort of predetermined script. Now you're ready to prepare for your own empathy interview. As you brainstorm your questions, keep in mind the purpose of your interview or what it is that you want to learn from your interviewee and design open-ended questions around that goal. We hope that this new skill will allow you to make more effective improvements for equity and partnership with those who are closest to the work that you're doing.